Is it just me or is this Pokemon Center music just like super chill? Like it's calming, but it still almost makes you want to dance for no reason. Or maybe that's just me. I don't know, but welcome back to Pokemon Sage, everyone. Last episode, we made it here to Quaver Town, and today we're going to be taking on the Quaver Town Gym, the first gym in the game, which of course we've taken on before uh, back in the first demo of the game, and I think it ended uh, very shortly after taking on the gym. So we are going to be continuing, hopefully today, with some new content. Uh, but I was actually in the Pokemon Center because off screen I trained a little bit as well as caught some new Pokemon. So you will notice uh, that actually Cobblin or Coblin can't even say his name is in the party and uh, he's just a dark type. I actually caught a bunch of Pokemon so I'll show them off in a little bit. I think Harpy the little flying guy um, and whatever else was in that downward cave just because uh, even myself like even though I said I wasn't gonna try to catch everything because we've already played through the game I just was curious to still catch them all because I love the designs in this game plus you know it'll make team building a little bit better later on because uh, I have no idea what the second gym is actually going to be but we do know the first gym here is ice type and we're gonna be taking it on so if you guys are excited for another episode make sure to hit that like button to show your support it's ice to meet you wow I love that they just start off with the ice puns already it's like they know me all too well i see that you're a new trainer oh my gosh <laughs> really another one <laughs> do you know about the gym challenge yes of course in orobos just like most other regions there's eight gyms foster himself specializes in ice types so grass and flyings will get turned to the cold shoulder fire fighting and rocks will cause him to chill out though okay dude you you actually have to chill out like you gotta climate if you want to get to foster what? Oh, I have to climb it. Okay, like literally climb the fort. Is this like a Juan's gym puzzle where you have to step on certain tiles without breaking them? Oh, I guess not. Kind of looked like it for a second. Like, um, what is that place called? Sutopolis City? Yeah, he has a gym where you got to step on each ice block without stepping on one twice or it'll break through to the ground. I don't know why Kittling is actually at half HP, I've just realized, which isn't great uh, considering we're starting off a gym challenge right now, but I think I did stock up on potions for once, um, trying to remember more things. You know, you'd think, uh, like, this is like my 50th Pokemon playthrough or something. I actually don't know what it is. Maybe one of you guys out there know because I feel like sometimes uh, you all that have been watching me for years know me better than even myself, at least uh, as far as all the playthroughs go, but either way, um, on like my 30th Pokemon playthrough or something, let's say, I'm finally starting to realize that I should stock up on potions every once in a while, but, uh, actually speaking of that, uh, one of the most commented things in the previous episode is actually, oh man, we really missed, come on Kittling, I believe in you buddy, yes, he's actually gonna miss too, so, uh, even though Kittling is super low HP, he is pretty close to evolving, I believe, at level 16 or 17, that's, that's pretty much every starter, right? Unless you're like Gen 2, but that Gen's kind of weird with levels like that. Uh, but anyway, um, a lot of people have been asking about series from the past and whether or not they'll be returning. And I need to turn down my headphones a little bit because I've realized, I don't know, I got some new headphones too, but I'm not going to get distracted. Anyway, Pokemon Prism and Yo-Kai Watch I saw were like the two most requested, I feel like. And Pokemon Prism is pretty recent actually, and I I've actually been debating myself. Uh, whether or not I want to continue that series because even though it's been so long I feel like I'd be super lost if I came back into it randomly um, It is still a game I really like the aesthetic of and like just the idea that it's uh, the sequel of Pokemon Brown The game I first ever played on my channel or well kind of region adventures was kind of brown um, But either way Pokemon Prism whoa still a really awesome game And I would like to finish it at some point as well as Yo-Kai Watch actually I guess I took a huge break from that series um, but it's still actually, I play the Yo-Kai Watch games sometimes on my free time. I actually really like them. It's just, for some reason, LPing them, I guess, because it's slightly different, but not really super different from Pokemon. I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm just trying to come up with excuses right now. But the point is that uh, they may return at some point. The thing is, at least for Yo-Kai Watch, I know I there's a new one coming out, so it's kind of hard to tell whether I should continue that one or play the new one, you know, because I guess fans of that series will be fans of, I feel like, any Yo-Kai Watch game. Um, and like I said, it's a series I definitely still enjoy, so I guess uh, that is my common question for you all that uh, are Yo-Kai Watch fans, but hey, since we're speaking about other Pokemon hacks and other games right now while playing Sage, uh, Pokemon Insurgents is the final thing I wanted to talk about, because yesterday, Sunday, if you're watching this when it comes out, uh, which by the way, if you are, special shout out for watching this right, right when it's out, because uh, I appreciate you just a little bit more than if you waited a couple days. I don't know why. I guess maybe because you are, you got that notification. What is it called? The notification squad? Something like that. I always see the hashtags. 
Um, and I never actually got what it meant until I, I rang the bell myself for a channel, and now I can say that I'm a proud member of the Notification Squad too. Just not for my own channel, I guess. I, I don't know. Does that even count? I guess. I don't know. I guess I'm always a part of the Notification Squad on my own channel because I literally get notified of every comment and stuff. But anyway, um, Pokemon Insurgents, if you want to go download the update, uh, you can do so. There's a website and on my Twitter, I have actually retweeted it so you can check that out. Or I will link it in the description, even though this is a video for a different Pokemon hack. But uh, hey, I feel like I support all different types of fan games and uh, this game, Sage, as well as Insurgents, are definitely in my top favorite fan games of all time. And Insurgents is just insane, so just so you guys know, if you want to play it right now and get a little bit ahead, I won't be starting the series probably until I'm done with this playthrough, uh, but the Insurgents playthrough will, of course, continue. That was literally one of my favorite fan games to play here on the channel, so uh, yeah. Um, let me see. Flame Charge right now. I guess I'll get rid of Tail Whip. I don't really use it ever, so why not? And I think that is actually, oh, never mind, there's still another, another trainer it looks like. Okay, let's give Cub Zero a chance to battle. This episode has been all about Kittling so far, and I mean, it's pretty much because I wanted him to get to level 16, which he now did, so hopefully he'll be evolving. Uh, but yeah, um, hopefully, well, I don't really know how long Pokemon Sage will take to continue, or sorry, to complete. Uh, this current demo, but once we do, I will definitely bring back Pokemon Insurgents, and uh, seeing how, I guess, daily uploads go, I'm gonna try to upload, I guess, every weekday, and maybe Sundays off, that's kind of my tentative schedule right now, but if I can get that going, then I'll see if I can add on, you know, a second series or something on top, but for now, I want to stick to at least just one main Pokemon fan game at a time, so we'll finish up Sage, uh, then we got Insurgents coming up, and who knows what will happen after that. I mean, Ultra Sun and Moon are coming out at some point, so I guess we will definitely be LPing that. Um, but let's head back into the gym now that we're healed up and ready. And Kittling didn't evolve, actually, so I guess this is kind of an oddball game. Level 17, maybe, for the starter evolutions. I, I feel like I should remember this from my original playthrough, but I don't. Either way, let's take on the gym leader, Foster. Orenji, is that you? It's been so long since I last saw you. This is so what? When did we ever see this guy? Your parents used to bring you here from time to time. I can't believe you managed to walk this far on your own. I thought he was actually referencing when we were here for the previous demo, but oh ho ho! I literally thought he was Santa last time too, and he actually says ho ho ho, or well, almost does. I remember you were always the one that cried when you fell in the slush. You've grown up so much since then. I wish you the best of luck, but as a gym leader, I won't hold back. And I don't expect you to, Foster, so let's go full-on battle against the first gym in Pokemon Sage. And he actually does look like Santa. Like, you cannot deny that Gym Leader Foster here. Pretty cool stuff, though. But uh, he's going to start off with the Shady, or I guess Icy Penguin in this case. There's not really too much Shady about this one. Um, so I guess we can stick to Delibird for it. But Penglip here is actually quite a slippery penguin, it looks like. Hitting us with that uh, super effective... Was that rollout, actually? I did not expect that. Uh, but Flame Charge, our new move... It's definitely going to destroy him, and that also raises our speed. Kind of forgot about that one for a second, uh, but I just remembered. I think, like, uh, Talonflame definitely makes use of that move, and I think it was introduced, actually, with Pig Knight back in, like, 5th gen. Maybe it was in the game before then, but I feel like I remember it mostly from Pig Knight because he was kind of a slow Pokemon, but you'd make use of, you know, that speed raise there. But we got another one, boys, and Cub Zero goes down in one hit, and his final Pokemon is actually going to be Snome. My, my, you've gotten strong, but I'm not done yet. All right, Santa, I hope I have uh, been... Oh, I was going to go a weird way with that. Uh, how about you just check whether I've been naughty or nice, and then let me know, because I have a feeling... Oh, wait! Okay, not going to take us out. Um, I was going to say, though, I don't know if it's actually a naughty thing, what we're about to do, but we're definitely about to take out a Snome and take down the Gym Leader. So is that a naughty or nice thing? Get it? Ice thing? I'm going to go ahead and just... Just, just, let's just keep this going. Kittling is going to get level 17, and I guess maybe be evolving? Ho oh, ho, well done, well done. Yes, we even get an evolution, dude. This is, like, perfect. I feel like this happened last time. Like, we literally got the evolution. What? What is this evolution animation? That was so sick. Our Kittling evolved into Pyrote. Wow, that was amazing. Did you, like, it was also fire and rocks around it because it becomes a fire and rock type 
And it's actually going to be learning SmackDown here and not the WWE kind, I'm assuming. But we're going to go ahead and get that over Tackle, I guess. Because uh, I haven't really used Tackle in a while. And we have Headbutt too, so good stuff. I even... It even like evolves outside of the Pokeball. I mean, I don't I don't see why it wouldn't have, but excellent. I haven't had such a good battle in years. You and your Pokemon make a great team. You mean just me and Pyrote? Because uh, we pretty much just swept through that gym with one Pokemon, but we get the Snowball Badge. Its message is that every Pokemon journey has a small start. I'm kind of uh, a little sad that there's not like a cool little 3D animation, but you know, still the classic jingle as always. I love it. We also get Snowy Terrain, covers the ground in ice, giving a damage boost to all ice types and cutting the speed of non-ice. Wow, that actually sounds pretty powerful, uh, but we only really have Cub Zero as an ice Pokemon right now. But now you have my badge. I can rest easy knowing you can handle what's out there. You have a long journey ahead of you. Be sure to stay wrapped up, Orenji. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Santa uh, Foster. We got our first badge though, and uh, now we can actually see what is next up with Pokemon Sage, because I think like the demo the first time around, uh, like I said, we got to play a little bit after the first gym here, but not too much. So now that we can get up to the third gym, I'm very excited to see if we can actually get out of this snowy area. I mean, I like snow, don't get me wrong. Um, but I guess I was really looking forward to see other kinds of environments in this game because uh, yeah, the first demo was pretty much just ice or nice nice ice I don't know. I always remember actually I know this sounds random But there was this one like sweet life of Zack and Cody episode where they were on like a TV game show type of thing They were stacking up like giant building blocks and he had to spell nice But he didn't get the N at the top. So it just said ice and the guy said Ooh, Sorry, you spelled ice <laughs> and ever since then, I fell in love with puns. Anyway, we've done it. We got our first badge. Good luck. You'll need it. Thank you, my man. This is Route 3, and uh, yeah, I feel like the demo ended here last time. Oh, wow. Okay, we've already got something different. What? A really tiny trainer. What? This guy looks even smaller than us. What is this? Oh, it's because he's crouching. Okay, Birdwatcher Tim with some... Pokeball eggs on his head. That's actually really cool. I feel like I shouldn't really uh, use Pyro all that much though, or at least now that he's evolved because, you know, we've got other Pokemon on our team as well as just other stuff that I can catch as well. I think the only Pokemon that I didn't find was actually Snome, uh, the last Pokemon of the gym leader there, but it's back in the downward cave, so maybe I'll go back there and have a look uh, in between episodes or something because I do want to catch us another Pokemon and I'm not sure really what yet. We do have Cub Zero which I actually found out evolves into a pure ice type so although it would have been super sick to have you know a Weavile kind of thing in this game and I think there actually is a dark and ice type it's just uh, Cub Zero evolves into just a pure ice but um, I don't know that's still pretty nice and I hate to keep saying nice and ice puns but uh, the gym leader got me in the mood guys and once I'm in the mood for puns they just don't stop. There's actually Harpy, and you can see that I actually caught one, um, but not in the party right now, I guess. I also put the Fortify. I think we caught Fortify last episode as well, which is like the first, I guess, Magikarp-like Pokemon in this game. I don't know. We caught it with an old rod, so it can't really be the most powerful fish I imagine out there, um, but maybe it actually does evolve into something pretty powerful. I didn't really check out the full Pokedex, as I said. I do like to spoil myself just, you know, to an extent. I didn't really want to see the whole thing or the legendaries and stuff, which is the same for Insurgents, actually. I've seen so many, like, screenshots and things on Twitter um, as the development came out of, like, new Deltas and Megas. And, man, I, like, it's, like, I love the spoilers, but at the same time, I haven't had an experience with a Pokemon game where I guess it feels, like, truly blind in a while. Um, and I guess you really do get that sometimes from the fan games instead. I guess I, that's why I feel like... Um, at least with Ultra Sun and Moon, I kind of do like the fact that there hasn't been too much news announced just yet. We did get that new, like, Lycanroc form, I believe, but, uh, spoiler alert, by the way, I'm pretty sure everyone out there has heard of it by now, uh, but I felt like it was kind of minor, so, I don't know, uh, plus I was kind of busy when it came out, so never really made a video about it, but, uh, Hiker Roberto goes down, and Cub Zero's already at 15, so I feel like Cub Zero might also be getting kind of close to evolving. I don't know, I think it only evolves once though, so it might be like a level 20-ish evolution, but for some reason we added that old scruffy hiker into our Poke Gear, so now he can call and bother us about the kinds of new rocks he discovers, or I'm sorry, minerals, uh, 
whatever he might else do. And we got another Charles? Wait, wasn't that... What? Never mind. I, I just got so confused. I thought that the hiker's name was Charles also, but I think it was actually Roberto or Robert. Either way, Bird Watcher Man here has got a Bluffin, which is another Pokemon I believe I caught. And it's kind of weird because I think it's an Ice type, um, but it looks like a flying... I don't know, but there's a flying one. And it's going to probably go down not as easily as I thought. It does get some... Whoa, wait, what? What attack did I use? Oh, Bite. I meant to go Ice Shard. I was like, why didn't we get priority there? But it's because I misclicked. It's all good, though. Uh, before we move on, I actually kind of want to see what new Pokemon we can find in this route because, as I mentioned, we are finally exiting the snowy area. I literally said it not knowing whether or not we were actually going to be exiting it, but apparently we are, and that is awesome because, like I said, I've been looking forward to seeing like the new biomes and environments and stuff in this game. Um, I guess within a lot of fan games that I've played recently, one of the coolest things is like the variety in places. Like we've seen desert areas sometimes in the starting area. Sometimes you start out in like a city environment or like urban-ish. I think like Pokemon Black and White uh, was kind of like that. I don't know, I guess between fan games and uh, official Pokemon games. I have definitely loved like how it's evolved from uh, back in like the GBA days. Like everything kind of looked the same, I feel like in Pokemon Fire Red, but we got a new Pokemon here actually, Muzzbury, the normal grass berry mouse. I think we fought this before, but uh, never had a chance to catch it, and now we actually have it, so that is pretty good. And I didn't mean to rip on Pokemon Fire Red, uh, I guess what I was trying to say is, uh, maybe it was the graphics limitations, but all of the areas kind of looked similar, like, and it made... Like, there wasn't too much environmental distinction, I guess. Like, nowadays, you got a clear desert area, a clear couple of different forests, and even the forests themselves each look very unique. Like, I guess in what I'm trying to say is, if you had a forest in Fire Red, you couldn't really tell it apart from Viridian Forest, unless you literally know the layout. But the graphics and stuff would all be the same. I don't know, maybe it's just little things like that, but I love it when there's uh, different biomes and different Pokemon, obviously, for the type of biome they're in. And they definitely do a good job of that nowadays with Alola, like, I feel like it was perfect. There was such a huge variety of Pokemon and different areas, despite it just being four little islands. That was actually one thing I was very worried about uh, with Pokemon Sun and Moon, like, when they showed off it was going to be just four islands, and I think a lot of people also thought this way, but it felt like there wasn't going to be too much to the game. Um, and although I guess the games weren't like super duper packed with content, it was still uh, super varied and there were so many Pokemon in it. And I loved it, man. But of course, you got Ultra Sun and Moon right on the horizon. No pun intended. Is that even a pun? I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, they're, they're right around the corner, basically. I think like two or three months now. And I can't wait to actually see what's going on because I still don't know if it's going to be like exactly a black and white 2 kind of situation where we got uh, new Pokemon all over Alola. I really hope there's new Alolan forms though, like for Pokemon that aren't just Kanto ones, especially. Um, but we got a couple of berries there. Don't you just love them? Yes. I oh, excuse me. I just had some Chipotle and uh, guess it's coming out one way or another. We got a pottering can though. That's kind of weird. Pottering, I guess because it's a pot. Wait, you don't really plant the berries in a pot, though. So what is it? What is a pottering plant? Did it just say watering and I read it wrong? I don't know, but I guess we'll put a chesto berry here and probably never come back for it, to be honest. But, whoa, is this going to be a double battle? Yes, it is. The moment we've been preparing for and something I've kind of been waiting for, actually, because I was curious since they were on both sides of the, you know, path. If they were... What is that thing? Oh, my gosh. That little thing is so cute. Alpine. The, the the tree trunk Pokemon I get it it's uh it's an elephant trunk but it's literally a tree trunk too okay that's pretty funny actually and I really like the design I, I just had a cute chasm there I apologize but uh it's actually that cute like what the heck dude and we got Kurtruffle which I believe we've seen before back in the first demo but man I need to catch myself an Alpine like what the what 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 is this dude I can't handle it right now. Um, but we can't handle the Kurtuffle either, apparently, as it's gonna actually put us to sleep and also acid? Wait, who used- who put us to sleep then? Oh, was it- probably it was Effects Spore or something like that, right? From hitting him with Flame Charge. That's the only thing I can assume, but at least we take him down, the Picnicker and the Camper. I love the sprites in this game, by the way, like, uh, I think I actually mentioned that too, because it was a last, but she was, like, all covered up in, like, snow gear and stuff. So I was thinking, like, maybe they actually have differences in this game as well for the climate, and they actually do, and that's another little detail that I think is super awesome. Like, depending on the biomes and stuff, you know, you got different trainer types, and actually this Pokemon too, 
might look like it's a shiny or something because of the red beak, but it actually has a different coloring depending on the berry that it's apparently holding. Um, so it's a pretty cool like little, I guess, form difference, like a minor form difference. I don't think the typing or anything changes, but maybe it, uh, I don't know, actually, I think it's just cosmetic, but still pretty cool nonetheless. Dream Dettery, Dream Dirty Ranch? What? Huh. I was just talking about Pokemon Black and White 2 and... Oh my gosh, is that Boshaf? From Pokemon Uranium? What is that? I guess it's clearly like a Black Sheep Pokemon. Um, I guess we'll probably run into one here. Maybe like a Marie counterpart or something. Whoa! There it is! Dream Dirty, actually. That's literally what it's called. Is it just me or does this thing look like Boshaf? I need to know what type it is now, but uh, I'm sure you guys that watch Pokemon Uranium know who I'm talking about. I had it on my team, the Dabbing Sheep itself. We gotta find out what typing this is because, of course, Basha was dark and fighting, and that's a really cool combo, and I actually don't have any Pokeballs, so too bad, Dream Dury. You are going down, my friend. Um, this one does remind me a little bit more of, like, there's another game that I recently played that had little Dream Sheep Pokemon, wasn't there? Anyway, picked up a bunch of berries, and I guess we should probably head back and get some Pokeballs because I'm actually really curious what the heck typing that sheep is. I feel like it's not gonna be as cool as dark and fighting though. I don't know, maybe I just really like that typing because of uh, Scrafty. That was actually one of my favorite Gen 5 Pokemon. And uh, yeah, yawn. Sorry about that, it's not been sleeping well. Welcome to Dream Dirty Ranch. Some berry has been sneaking in my ranch and scaring my poor Dream Dirty. They've been beating up a storm all night. I'd have a look myself, but I'm so tired after the day's shores that I, Yawn, you look like a sprightly young lad. Would you consider helping out an old wary farmer like me? Sure. I like that we had an option there. Like, what if I said no? Yeehaw, that's the way to go. Please come back at night time and see what's spooking my dream dirty. Oh, wow. Do we actually have to come back at night? Like, literally in the game time? Because I guess it uses my computer's time, so I could cheat and change my computer's time real quick, you know? I'll probably do that just because I'm very curious what the heck this event is, and I don't feel like actually waiting an hour or two, because uh, it's only like three right now, actually, so... Wait a second, can we not go in here? Like, do we actually just have to wait? Then what the heck? This is not probably not even the right way to go then. Oh, wait, the path continues over here, wow. Okay then, uh, Pokemon will gain less experience when battling a foe that's lower level. Makes sense, I don't know who wouldn't know that, but maybe, uh, you know, some trainer tips out there for those of you that have never played a Pokemon game, even though you're playing Pokemon Sage somehow. But there is a Lass, and she doesn't actually have the Snow Clothes, so there's finally, well, not really the answer, but the confirmation of that. Uh, but yeah, I really like that, actually. I guess they look like schoolgirls, or have at least a school outfit going on. Just chilling in the middle of the forest, you know, with my deer and Kawadi actually. Wait, I remember this Pokemon from uh, the first demo, so maybe we did get this far? I, I feel like none of this was in it though, but I do remember this Pokemon. And I don't know why the heck I'm making Cobblin fight it. I guess because uh, our little buddy is asleep, so yeah, maybe we should we should just do that. Or I could have potioned up Cub Zero. I don't know, either one would have worked, but uh, Thundershock, uh-oh. Wow, Coblin actually lives, dude. That's crazy. All right, well, I guess I'm keeping my self-promise or whatever, self-challenge uh, that I'm gonna try not to let too many Pokemon die, even though I think Kittling did die once already, but I think we only have one death so far, so hopefully we can keep it close to that way. I, I don't actually know. Maybe someone did die and I don't remember, but one more Smackdown. We'll finally finish this thing off, and I actually kind of want to catch one of those. It looks pretty cool. I forgot what it's based off of, but obviously it's an electric type. It's got Watt in its name too, um, and actually Muzzberry's coming back out, another blue one. I think we actually have the blue one, so it can either be a red berry, a blueberry, or like a, I think a purple, or maybe a yellow actually. Maybe they are just cute after all. Wait, what are you talking about? Huh? Okay, her cute Pokemon can be strong too. Oh, so she thought her Pokemon were just cute but not very strong, and what? How has it already become evening time? What? I guess because it just turned 5 p.m. on my computer. I don't think that still counts as night though. Well, it definitely doesn't if it's just the evening still. Uh, but maybe at like another hour or two and we can come back to that Dream Dirty Ranch. I'll probably just come back to it uh, in the next episode because it would actually be kind of cool to record an episode at nighttime. But whoa! It's our rival Sophia! What the? Now I'm back at full strength and ready to go! Okay. Just so happens to be chilling at this rest house? I guess it is a rest house. Orenji, where'd you come from? Headed to Rustling Forest too, huh? 
I'm beat. Route 3 was no joke, and I went to the forest to catch a few new Pokemon. My Pokemon got a little roughed up, though, so I came back here to catch my breath. Can I catch my breath for a second? Because this music... I don't know, man. Maybe it's just me, but I think, like, they're all so jamming right now. I don't know. Might sound a little crazy, but how about we have a little practice battle right here? Don't worry. My Pokemon are in great shape. They can handle it. But did you think about my Pokemon? Sophia, you gotta put yourself in other people's shoes sometimes. Just because you're good to go doesn't mean I am, and I'm pretty sure we are actually in a pretty bad situation uh, to battle her right now. But we do have... Oh, never mind. Like I said, I did stock up on items, so... At least we're not completely donezo yet. And her new Pokemon here, her first Pokemon is actually gonna be a new one. Larva Bidet? What kind of name is that? Like, did you literally combine Larva and Bidet? I thought Bidets were like those things that, that are sometimes in bathrooms that I've never had the luxury of seeing, but I know they exist. Yeah, I don't I don't know what was up with that name, but uh, maybe one of you guys can fill me in. Well, I'm guessing it's not the same type of Bidet. I'm actually just joking. Uh, but what does it actually mean? I don't know. Anyway, fawning is next. And, uh, I think if this thing was grass type, we'd be able to destroy it with a nice shard or two. But, I guess, whoa, this thing has double kick, actually. Okay, maybe I shouldn't mess around with fawning too much. I actually debated on adding uh, fawning to our team as well. Because I did say I was going to try to use, for some reason, uh, four-legged Pokemon. Or Pokemon that stand on all fours. And fawning is also one of those. And it's pretty cute, man. Kind of reminds me of, uh... Well, it doesn't actually really remind me of Bambi. The only thing is they're both deer, I guess. But we have a goat already, and I feel like goats and deers are pretty close as well. Actually, maybe they're not. Um, what are the things with the antlers? I can I only think of Stantler right now. Reindeers have antlers, right? I don't know, but her final Pokemon is going to be the little grass bird. Because actually, she picked the water starter, but it got stolen by that one other dude. So that's actually quite unfortunate. That was amazing! Yes, it was. You're tough. What's your secret? A gym badge? It's so obvious. I wanted to catch that thief so badly, I just rushed through everything. But you took your time and trained, and look, you even beat a gym leader. Well, I guess that means I'm heading back to Quaver Town. I want to get stronger, and if that means I have to battle the best trainers in the region, I will. One day, I'll find that guy and take my Ogwade back. I'll see you later. When we meet again, things are going to be a little different. Just you wait. All right, can't wait to see you again, Sophia. And actually, I'm wondering where the heck that other rival is at, because I feel like during the other demo, we did battle him at least once. Also, this lady sells herbs randomly. Um, I don't trust buying herbs from random old ladies in uh, rest houses, I guess. So I'm going to go back to Route 3 and actually just head back to Quaver Town because we definitely should heal up, maybe stock up on some Pokeballs before we head into the forest. And actually, I might just backtrack a little bit because I feel like we might have missed... Uh, rival battle or something. I don't know. Why do I feel like I battled him before? Maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. So yeah Musbury, I don't got time for this because that is actually gonna be the end of this episode So until the next time I'll be here staring at this pond actually probably not I'm gonna do some stuff off-screen But See ya